Today we're going to talk about drawing Lewis structures for ions and then look at what's called resonance structures, just kind of a brief overview of those. If you have an ion and you want to draw the Lewis structure for it, I'll go ahead and show everything here, um, you need to, if it has a negative charge, you need to add one electron for the total number of valence electrons when you are adding those up. Okay, if um, you have a positive charge, then when you're adding up your valence electrons, you would subtract an electron for every charge. Okay, so here we have a negative one charge, and so we would add up our valence for carbon, so that's four. We have one nitrogen, that's five. And then we would have to add one electron for that negative charge. Remember, a negative charge means that molecule has gained an electron, so that's why it's added in here to give us 10 total. If you forget that one to add it, you're gonna have nine as your valence electrons, and we can't have odd numbers. Remember, electrons come in pairs. So that's also sort of indication that you've forgotten something. So if you look at CN, this is actually cyanide, and you were trying to draw the Lewis structure, okay, I've shown videos for two different methods. So here's the one from the book, and then if you wanted to use the NASB method, you could do that as well. But if we place, so we have our carbon nitrogen. Those are the only two atoms that we have. And it has a negative charge, so we need to put that in, in brackets there. Okay, and then if we think about putting in all lone pairs now, so we put two, four, six, eight, and then two there, so that's ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, but there's a significant problem here. Carbon only has four electrons around it, and it needs eight, so it has half. And then nitrogen has eight, but we know nitrogen normally makes two bonds and has a lone pair. So this definitely doesn't look like our bonding patterns. So two of our lone pairs are going to come over and form two more bonds to give us a triple bond. Okay, And so instead of here, we have a triple bond. Okay. This one is unique in that carbon is not forming four bonds. So that is very um, different from what we were we discussed before. And that's because we have this negative charge, this charge on the ion. And so, of course, we have a lone pair. So nitrogen's making three bonds with a lone pair, and carbon's making three with a lone pair as well. And so typically see we see it with four, but this is um, an exception to it. Um, here, but we do fill the octet this way, and we have to have a triple bond because if we just have a single bond, our octets are not full. Okay, carbon lacks its octet. All right, so with saying that, when we're dealing with multiple bonds, double bonds, triple bonds in structures, sometimes there's more than one way to draw the resonance structure. Okay, and so you may come across this problem when you're trying to draw something, like this would be a, a good example here. If I'm drawing this and I know that I need a double bond, I have really two options here. I could put my double bond between this oxygen or I could put the double bond next to this oxygen. So I could also do this. Okay, this is um, an ion, so we have that negative charge. Okay, and so when I'm doing this, neither of these are wrong. Um, these are what we call resonance structures, and we draw resonance structures, and we put a double-headed arrow between them. So if you ever see that in your chemistry books or whatever you're reading, that means resonance structure. Okay, neither of these structures is the true structure, okay, but neither is wrong either. Okay, so if we look, the, the we have the same arrangement of atoms, so oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, ar around the carbon, 
Okay, three oxygens around the carbon. But what's different is the arrangement of electrons. Here we put electrons next with this oxygen, and over here we moved them there. Okay, and so if you draw this, I encourage you to do that. Go ahead and go through your, your steps and, and try to draw this. You'll see that you have an option. You can put your electrons in either place. Okay, the true structure is actually a hybrid of the two resonance structures. And when a molecule has a resonance structure, it is more stable and it is said to be resonance stabilized. So if a molecule or an ion has two or more resonance structures that you can draw for it, uh, meaning that the electrons in multiple bonds are, um, can be in different locations, um, then it is more stable. Okay. The reason for that is because the electrons are spread out and their lone pairs and the multiple bonds over a larger region of space. And the more that you spread out charge over a molecule, the more stable it is. So if you look here, your charge, we have that negative charge, right? And we can move our double bond so it could be here or here. Okay, and so we spread out charge along that portion of the molecule. Okay, so the more resonance structures, the more stable the molecule. Okay, and the true structure is a hybrid, okay, meaning that we are just trying to represent it the best we can on paper. And so we would draw two to try to represent both. But in reality, it's a mixture. It's a, it's a hybrid of both of those, of what that molecule actually looks like in real life. It's at the molecular level. Okay, ozone, O3. If you draw it out, if you were doing the Lewis structure, you would see that I could put a double bond over here on the left side, or I could put a double bond on the right. Okay, both of these are correct, but the true structure is a hybrid of both of these. So ozone is in our upper atmosphere and it protects us from UV radiation. Okay, and so it has a resonance structure. So it shows it there. Both of these, so this is resonance stabilized. Both of these are correct, but the true structure would be sort of, would be a hybrid or a mixture of both of those. All right, thank you.